All right, 10.3, using chords. So starting off here, 10.6, the congruent corresponding chords theorem. That's a mouthful. Um, in the same circle or in congruent circles, two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their corresponding chords are congruent. So we have chord AB here is congruent to chord BC. And then if we looked at the arcs that correspond with them, arc AB is congruent to arc CD. In this if and only if statement, it says we could go either direction with that. We could either start off by saying that the chords are congruent, and then we could say that the arcs are congruent, or we could say that the arcs are congruent, so the chords have to be congruent. Um, next up. If a diameter of a circle is perpendicular to a chord, then the diameter bisects the chord and its arc. So what this is saying is here's our diameter, it's EG. This piece of the chord and this piece of the chord are equal. And this piece of the arc is congruent to that piece of the arc. Ten point eight, the perpendicular chord bisector theorem, or converse. If one chord of a circle is perpendicular is a perpendicular bisector of another chord, then the first chord is a diameter. All right. So in this picture here, we don't have the center of the circle marked, but we know that the center of the circle would lie on SQ because it has to be a diameter. All right. Example nine. Find measure of arc. M N. Well, M N is right here. Its chord, um, segment M N, is right there. It's congruent to this piece over here. So it's going to be 112 degrees. Something else that we had to use in this picture was that the radiuses, the radii, are equal. Right? If those radii were not equal, then these would be different circles and our theorems wouldn't work for this. Example 10, find AF and then measure of arc DB. Well, um, AF is going to be equal to FB because that is a perpendicular bisector. So that's going to be 13. Or let me rephrase that. This here, segment ED, is a diameter, so it bisects segment AB at point F right there. It also bisects the arc. So here I'm going to actually have to do some math, and I'm going to say, well, 2x plus 39 equals 5x plus 3. Solving that, I would say, well, 36 equals 3x, and 12 equals x. Now to get the actual angle measure, I'm going to need to plug back in. I'll plug into the second one. We'll say 5 times 12 plus 3. I'm going to type that in the calculator. 5 times 12 plus 3 equals 63 degrees. So arc DB is going to be 63 degrees. Uh, 10.9, the equidistant chords theorem. In the same circle or in congruent circles, two chords are congruent if and only if they are equidistant from the center. Right, so what that's saying there, we have the beginning of a radius here and here, and then we have chords A, B, and chord C, D. And it says that segment A, B is congruent to segment C, D if and only if E, F is congruent to EG, right? And EF and EG are both pieces of a radius. Not the whole radius, but little pieces of them. All right, example 11. In the diagram, QR is congruent to ST, which is 40. And we're supposed to find the radius. So this, 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 and that are all equal to 20. Right, because that's half of 40. All 
Now, there's different ways we could do this problem. Um, I'm going to look at this right triangle right here. We know that this piece of that radius is 4x minus 1. And we know that this is 2x plus 7. At least I'm pretty sure that this is supposed to go with that side. Let me look at the picture for another second. Yeah, that's the way we're supposed to do that problem. It's kind of hard to tell that that goes with that side. Um, now let's plug into the Pythagorean theorem there. So that's going to be 2x plus 7 squared. That's my hypotenuse squared equals 20 squared. Oops. 20 squared plus 4x minus 1 squared. This is a univariable equation, an equation with just one variable. So we're going to be able to solve it and get our um, x equals from this. So right here, I will have, um, think about this as 2x plus 7, 2x plus 7. This is going to be 4x squared plus 28x plus 49 equals 400 plus... And again, with this um, piece squared here, I think about it as if it was split up like that. And I have 16x squared minus 8x plus 1. This looks like it's going to turn into a quadratic because, well, I guess it is a quadratic already. These will not cancel. So I'm going to move everything to the right side and see if I can factor this and get a good answer from it. So I'm going to get a 0 equals, and I need to subtract a bunch of things. On the right side, talking about the degree 2, the 16x squared minus 4x squared will be 12x squared. And then I have negative 8x plus 28, or I guess it will be minus 28, will be negative 32x. And then lastly, what will we have? We will have... Um, 400 plus 1 minus, oops, uh, 400 plus 1 minus 49, that will be plus 352. All right, let's see if we can take anything out of this equation. Um, they're all even, so I'll divide everything by 2. So this will be 6x squared minus 32 divided by 2 is 16, right? Divided by 2 is 16, yes. So minus 16x plus 352 divided by 2 is 176. Everything is still even, so I'm going to divide everything by 2 again. So I'd have 3x squared minus 8x plus 88. And I think that's going to be all I can do. Um, let's see about factoring this now. So I'll have 0 equals, I'll have 3x, and then a plain old x. Hmm. 88 could split up into 8 and 11. It could split up into 22 and 4. How could we do that? They both have to be negative whenever they go in, right? They both have to be negative there. What's 8 times 3 and then minus 11? That would be 13. 8 times 4 minus 22, that would be 10. That wouldn't work. Hmm.
Oh, I made the problem way harder than it needs to be. Look here. I, I looked at the picture wrong. Let me erase my markings. That way I can see it easier. This is talking about the 4x minus 1. This is the 2x plus 7. So all of this was no needed or not needed. So let me start over. We're looking here. We know that this, 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 and this are equal. And then I could say that, well, 4x minus 1 equals 2x plus 7. All right, lots easier here. This will be 2x equals 8, so x equals 4. All right, way easier. Plugging in, uh, I'm going to take this triangle here. Let me copy it down. This is Q, this is C, this is U. Um, C, U, I'm going to plug 4 in there. That'll give me 15. I know that Q, U is 20. And then I have my radius as my hypotenuse. Much easier problem now. Radius squared is equal to 20 squared plus 5 squared. Let me type that in a calculator. 20 squared plus 25 is going to be 425. Taking the square root, well, that would give me a decimal. Let's break that apart. Um, 425, we could say 425 divided by 5 would be 5 and 85 divided by 5 again would be 5 and 17. So this would be a pair of fives, a single 17, and R would be 5 root 17. And that's the radius of the circle. Much easier problem than I thought it was. All right, so that's all of lesson three.